Building on top of that, what kind of AI ethics could avail us a better future? Uh, first and foremost, remember that ethics is ultimately about suffering. That morality doesn't mean obeying the laws of some god. Morality doesn't mean obeying the laws of some government. Morality simply means helping uh, liberate sentient beings from suffering. This is morality. It's not always easy because sometimes the same action uh, uh, protects some people or some beings from suffering, but could cause a certain amount of suf suffering to others. So we saw during, during the pandemic, you need to put people in lockdown. Of course, they are not happy about it. It's not pleasant. It it's, it's, it's could be quite miserable to be in lockdown, but you need it to protect people from worse suffering, like dying from a disease. So there are, oh, it, it's very, of course, complicated to weigh these things one against the other. But all these ethical arguments are ultimately in terms of suffering. This will cause some suffering to that person, but will liberate that person from, uh, from, from a, a certain danger. And we need to keep this in mind when we come to deal with AI also. It should, ultimately, the discussion should be about uh, uh, suffering and liberation from suffering. And we should also remember that as far as we know, AI itself cannot suffer. It has no, as far as we know, it has no consciousness, it has no feelings, it can't feel pain or pleasure or love or fear. So it's a tool that could have a huge impact on sentient beings, but it is not sentient itself. Of course, the whole discussion will completely change if and when AI becomes conscious and uh, becomes an ethical agent and an ethical subject that can also itself suffer or be happy. And I think this is maybe the, the, the biggest unknown about the whole field of AI is whether AI is anywhere on the road to developing consciousness or not, and how would we know? Um, there are huge debates about it, uh, uh, but th th there are no easy answers. Uh, but we, all the time, whenever we talk about ethics, we need to remember that it's really a discussion about suffering. Yeah, definitely. Uh, when we say AI is assistive, at least, at the very least, uh, it needs to be harmless, uh, helpful, mm. and honest. Uh, honest being the most important to me because it's easy actually to evaluate whether it causes uh, toxicity, like immediate harm, uh, or whether it's uh, being helpful or actually misleading people and so on. Uh, but honesty uh, is difficult to measure because whether something is truthful or not depends on context. And AI gets used in all sorts of different contexts in which honesty uh, is gauged differently uh, by different communities. And so I, I think really to um, alleviate suffering, we need to delegate the kind of uh, alignment, like the social norms around what counts as honest and also harmless and also helpful to the particular communities that deploy the sort of AI to help such communities. Uh, there's probably no one-size-fits-all um, measurement yeah. evaluation when it comes to honesty. Uh, and uh, I would also argue that even on harmless and helpfulness, uh, there's also community differences uh, across the world. So the more that we delegate to the people closest to the suffering, these kind of evaluations, and for those evaluations to meaningfully affect the uh, um, constitution of that particular AI instance that they're deploying, the more we resemble this old personal computing for community infrastructure point of view that can empower particular communities. So that is actually the direction we're taking in making sure that the democratization of AI use is in the hands of the citizens. And once we do so, one benefit is that more and more people will come to understand uh, the AI's 
systems and make um, contributions on how to understand the levels of intelligence or even eventual consciousness of such systems. And once we are armed with that kind of insights uh, in AI evaluation and safety and so on, then we can more um, with more confidence say, okay, research should go this way because this will not accidentally create conscious but misaligned beings. And research should instead go this way because we understand those guardrails better now. Hello, I'm Professor Yuval Noah Harari, uh, CEO on Taiwan Plus. Hello, I'm Audrey Tang, Taiwan's Digital Minister, CEO on Taiwan Plus.